welcome to part three of our Retail 101 video. Uh, we're going to focus now on the dispenser and actually what happens to the fuel once it gets from our underground storage tank. Again, we push it with the submersible pump to our actual dispenser. Um, similar to our tank sump, we have to have some type of uh, chamber or uh, an area for these fittings to be where we can access them. So similar to tank sumps, our dispenser sumps can be made either of polyethylene or fiberglass. Uh, there can be large rectangular chambers that sit directly below our dispenser. Um, they'll be encased in concrete. Again, this would be all backfill, and this is what our dispenser actually bolts to on top of this island. Um, going back, this is an example of a, a fiberglass one, or we can look, we make these also out of polyethylene. You saw where that one was a, a rectangular box, where this one is kind of more angled, and our, our pipe comes up, and again, this is a, a chamber that gives us access to all the connections and fittings in here. But again, more importantly, if anything should leak, it's, it's contained in that, uh, in that chamber. Um, he's also a referred to, guess what, another three-letter acronym, a UDC, an underground. underground dispensing containment. So the way our piping system works and how we get fuel from multiple dispensers is as it comes into our dispenser sump, you either come in at a T, um, come up through a riser pipe, to our dispenser and then at the opposite end of the T, the, the pipe goes on and feeds the next dispenser or in this case what we call a loop sump, it comes in and attaches right to the bottom of this valve and then continues to go on and that's how we feed multiple dispensers with one line. But if you think about it, um, that submersible pump, this line is always under pressure. So that way when you go to fuel, you don't have to wait for something to pressurize, the fuel will start coming out of your nozzle pretty much immediately. So that underground pipe that we have in our system is always under pressure. So one of the most important pieces of equipment that we have at our fuel station, and this goes back to our requirement from the NFPA, National Fire Protection Agency, is every one of our dispensers at every line that we have to come up needs to have what's called an emergency valve. Another valve in our industry has many names, called an emergency valve, a crash valve, an impact valve, a 10 valve, um, but the the purpose is the same for all of us, multiple names for the same valve. And what it does is, if that dispenser should be knocked over, believe it or not, these things get hit all the time, and if that dispenser got knocked over, and you know, breaking our, our, our connection you know, here at our piping system, because we're under pressure, what's gonna happen? We're gonna have a geyser of gasoline, which is you know, obviously a dangerous situation, or as that dispenser's knocked over, there's a spark, you know, we have a flame or a fire, and now we have a geyser of gasoline that just continues to you know, feed a fire. Um, extremely hazardous situation. So again, what the industry did, it came up with a way of preventing um, you know, that from happening if a dispenser is hit over or, or knocked over. And the way we do that, again, is with what we call a shear valve or an impact valve. And uh, it's a pretty simple valve. There is a, um, a poppet inside that's loaded with a spring. So when it's, when it's uh, tripped, the poppet would close. And in normal conditions or normal operating procedures, the valve would be in an open position. So fuel is allowed to travel up through our dispenser and there's an arm here that, that kind of holds that spring, but there's a machined, you know, very precisely machined groove right here that separates the body of the valve from the top of the valve. So our body is actually connected to what's referred to as a stabilizer bar. This is in the frame of our dispenser sump. This is buried in concrete. So this, is a, this bar is, you know, very secure, and the base of our valve is attached by a plate or, or some type of, of U-bolt on the stabilizer bar. So it's, it's held in position. And then if our dispenser is hit or knocked over, this top is piped into the bottom of the dispenser, so this, this groove would shear. And as that top shears off, it trips our valve and closes off any fuel from coming up and spraying or, or, or causing a hazardous situation if a dispenser is knocked over. So again, very important piece of safety equipment. Every gas station has one. Um, there's a couple different, uh, there's a single poppet. This is actually a single poppet one here where it stops the, the fuel from this direction. Um, <clears throat> there's also a version of this called a double poppet valve where there's another poppet inside the top that when the top comes or shears away, it prevents any fuel that's in this pipe above here or in the dispenser from also spilling out or feeding a fire or uh, ending up in the ground. So a single poppet or a double poppet uh, shear valve. Um, again, advances 
in the industry, as, as things have evolved and things gotten better, um, there's now what's called a 10 plus version of our impact valve, where uh, again, we have a sheer top with the body and a sheer groove. Uh, but on this one, we have a rubber bladder that's secured over, the, uh, over that sheer groove. And the reason for that is many times what will happen is if that dispenser maybe is just bumped or kind of rocks on the island due to a, a high wind, and if the valve cracks, but doesn't crack enough to trip the valve, um, it, it could cause a, a crack that could potentially leak. Now, hopefully that leak would be contained in our dispenser sump, but what the 10 plus would do, if that occurs where we have what's called a nuisance break or a nuisance crack, um, the, the crack in the valve, again, our system's under pressure, that pressure would actually swell that, that bladder, and as it swells, it would trip our valve, and again, um, stop any gasoline from leaking out the store operator would know, okay, my valve's been tripped, I need to go and, and have it replaced. And uh, the, the tops on both the, um, the 10 plus and the standard impact valve, uh, you can see it's two piece, so if a dispenser's knocked over, they don't have to replace the whole valve, the body stays with in the dispenser sump, and they just simply replace the top, and it gets bolted in top, repiping up, and you're good to go. Your station's back up and running after your dispenser's been knocked over. One so, more important component in our emergency valve is what we refer to as a fusible link. So if our, our station is sitting there, and um, our valve hasn't been, been tripped or knocked over, but for some reason a fire broke out in this dispenser sump, and uh, what the fusible link does, it reaches a certain, I think it's about 160 degrees, when it reaches a certain temperature, that link will, will release and also close off our valve. So if we have a fire, the fusible link will also close the valve off so to prevent any fuel from feeding that fire further underneath the dispenser sump. So uh, that's the two purposes of our emergency valve is for any shear on the piping or any fire underneath our dispenser sump, we're gonna prevent fuel from, from coming up from our pressurized system over. So again, very piece of, uh, important piece of equipment, emergency valves found at every station. So let's talk about what happens when the fuel gets to our dispenser, kind of the last leg of our journey. Um, obviously, we talked about we have to have a way of measuring our fuel as it goes into our vehicle. So that's what uh, the purpose of our dispenser is. Again, they used to be pumps, but now they're just dispensers. So within this dispenser is uh, really uh, just a series of meters that kind of calculates fuel as it comes through. Again, it's being pushed by a submersible pump. It calculates it, sends it back to the electronics that are uh, at the top of our dispenser, and that allows you to look and see how much fuel you've uh, pumped, and then obviously how much it's gonna cost you. Unfortunately, it's probably gonna cost you a lot these days. Um, so that's kind of the, the purpose of our dispenser. Now, on top of our dispenser, or attached to our dispenser, is what we call our hanging hardware. And this is kind of where the fuel, once it leaves our dispenser, how it ultimately gets into our vehicle. So this is what we call dispenser hanging hardware, and it's composed of a couple different components. Uh, the first one is what we refer to as a whip hose. I'll talk about what that does. Uh, this is a breakaway valve. The long hose between the breakaway valve and the nozzle itself is referred to as a curb hose. We put a swivel at the end of the hose where it goes on the nozzle, and of course the nozzle. This is probably the thing you're most familiar with. This is the piece that you touch and actually insert in your vehicle as uh, you fill your car up. So let's look at each one of these individual components, and we will start with our breakaway valve. Uh, the breakaway is kind of another safety valve or, or another piece of safety equipment that we've integrated into retail fueling systems. And the job of the, the breakaway valve is, in case someone drives away with the nozzle still in their vehicle, it doesn't pull the pump over. Uh, believe it or not, it happens quite often. People get distracted, the nozzle's in their vehicle, they forget that it's there, and it shuts off, and they drive off, and the, the nozzle still in the vehicle instead of going back in the dispenser where it's supposed to be, what happens is the hose could pull over and you could pull the dispenser over with it. A couple things can happen. You know, number one, we could damage the piping underneath. Hopefully our emergency valve works correctly and doesn't allow any fuel to spray up. Um, but more importantly, it, it probably could damage the dispenser. And these things are pretty expensive. So store operators want to keep these things from being pulled over as people not paying attention drive off with nozzles still in their car. So the job of the breakaway is it just like it sounds it breaks away as the nozzle drives off with someone's vehicle and the way that it does that is designed um, it separates and there's poppets which prevents fuel from leaking out either above the dispenser 
or the fuel that's left in the, uh, the, the curb hose itself and prevents that from spilling on the ground and causing, again, a hazardous um, situation. So the breakaway, we actually make them in a couple different versions. This one is a reconnectable, meaning once it's separated, um, hopefully the person realizes that they're driving away with a, with a hose and a nozzle in their car and they stop and they bring that piece back to the, the store owner and the store owner or a maintenance person can come back and actually reconnect that, uh, reconnect that breakaway and the, the hose point can be back in service. Um, we also make a single use breakaway where once this separates, again, it's, it's poppeted so it keeps fuel from spraying everywhere. Once it separates, this actually has to be replaced. It's just, uh, um, just a single use breakaway. Um, we make them both three quarter inch and then one inch uh, for diesel fuel as well. So, um, but the breakaway, when it separates, it has to be pulled kind of in a, in a linear direction. And that's actually the job of this little guy up here, the whip hose. So what would happen is if someone drives off, this is connecting the top of a dispenser. Uh, we couldn't directly thread the breakaway into the top of the dispenser because it wouldn't, it wouldn't get that linear movement to separate. So that's what the whip hose does. If someone drives off, it allows that to turn, the hose to pull, and the breakaway to separate. And again, preventing our dispenser from being pulled over and, and damaging the dispenser or hurting someone if they're standing next to it uh, or damaging a vehicle. Um, again, so our breakaway, you know, pretty important piece of equipment that you'll see at the retail fueling site and part of our uh, hanging hardware package. Uh, again, the curb hose, um, you know, simply, you know, is what allows you to extend the nozzle to your vehicle and fill it up. So the other thing that we do is where the curb hose enters the nozzle, we put a swivel on there. Uh, it's usually a two-plane swivel, and what that a couple couple functions for the swivel. Number one, it allows you a little bit easier to maneuver your nozzle to get it in your vehicle, keeps the hose from twisting and, and kinking. Um, but what it also does, it also helps prolong the length of the uh, the curb hose itself. If we didn't have the swivel on there, if the hose is constantly turned and twisted, um, the hoses wear out a little bit longer. So the swivel again allows you to a little bit more ease of movement, getting the nozzle in your vehicle, and prevents the hose from being kinked and wearing over time. Okay, so let's do a quick wrap up again of how all the magic happens at our gas station. So it begins with our underground storage tank, our UST. That's what we use to, to store our fuel underground before it goes into our car. And uh, again, these are anywhere from 8,000 to 30,000 gallons, probably made of fiberglass or some type of steel that's coated with fiberglass or lined with fiberglass. Uh, they have to be double wall to try and keep gasoline out of the ground. And uh, these tanks need to breathe, maintain equilibrium. That's where our pressure vacuum vent and our vent lines come into place. As we fill the tank, we want to make sure that we capture any gasoline that may end up in the ground as contamination. Um, as the tank fills, those vapors got to go somewhere. So we collect the vapors through stage one vapor recovery. These vapors go back into the tank or into the tanker truck. Tanker truck goes back to the terminal. They're processed, turned back into fuel. So again, we've kept vapors from going into the, uh, into the air. Um, as we drop the, the fuel in, we have our spill container. It keeps any residual fuel from ending up in the ground. We collect it in a bucket um, as the fuel is coming in. So we don't overfill that tank. We use an overfill valve. To get the fuel from our tank to our dispenser, we have a submersible um, uh, pump or an STP, submersible turbine pump, that we enclose in a tank sump. Again, it gives us access to the pump if we need to replace or repair it, or any leaks in that piping connection will be collected in our tank sump. Again, not end up in the ground. Our piping, again, our piping is double wall. Um, flexible pipe allows us to do a, a single run with no buried joints. We run the pipe from our tank sump over to our dispenser sump. When it comes into our dispenser sump, it comes through an emergency valve that, or a shear valve where, again, our system's under pressure, so if a dispenser gets knocked over, our emergency valve will trip and prevents gasoline from, from creating a, a, a larger fire or, or a geyser of gasoline. Um, our fuel goes through our dispenser through a meter where it's uh, calculated how much we've, we've pumped and how much it's gonna cost us once we're done. It goes through the dispenser, out my whip hose, through a breakaway, through the curb hose, through your nozzle, and eventually in your fuel. So the whole thing, again, happens safely. Hopefully no fires, no explosions. We've kept gasoline out of the ground. We've kept vapors out of the air, and the whole system is safe. And there you have it. Um, again, if you want any information, we have our 201 videos on the individual components, but high-level overview, that's what happens at a gas station. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, for more information, go to 
uh, check out our channel on YouTube. It's called OPW University, or you can check out more information, videos, and, and uh, more product descriptions at www.opwglobal.com. My name's Ed Kammer. I'll see you on the forecourt.